of the things we've been looking most forward to at this year's SEMA show is seeing the Ring Brothers creation. And this year, you guys brought out a 64 Ford Fairlane. And it changed everything, I think, right? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it's, a, it's definitely a, a new swing on a 64 Fairlane. Well, you guys are known for your Fords, so um, you knew what you were doing, right? You knew what you were getting into, or well, was it a big problem? It was a, it was a problem. I, I mean, it's not a car that I would pick or even want to choose out of a hundred cars that I would pick to do. So, it was, it was a challenge to say the least. Well, I know you guys are known for modifying every panel. Can you uh, tell me some of the modifications you did? Um, starting with probably the roof chop, we took an inch out of the back and you know seven eighths out of the front we actually started with a two inch chop and it just was terrible i took off running out of the shop said sean we got to fix this before jim sees it <laughs> so that was probably the biggest movement of the car is, is changing the pillar and to do that we had to actually change the v-pillar uh -huh. and uh but we wanted to leave something stock looking so instead of just chopping it and bringing the, the v-pillar right down into the quarter we actually added this piece that gives it the Fairlane touch, but uh -huh. uh, we really wanted to, to still stick with the Fairlane touch. And some modifications you made, the whole rear end, the whole back panels, every one of them have been changed drastically. Can every, you tell me about every that? Every part of the back of the car has been changed. We Jim, notice it has a lot of rings, brothers rings on the back. Tell yeah. me about those. <laughs> uh, the taillights we machined, we actually left the actual lens itself as being the original 64. Okay. And the owner actually came up with the name of Afterburner because he thought the lights looked like the afterburner of a jet. Oh, cool. And, and the owner is Ken Smith and Ev Smith. Mm -hmm. And Ev actually picked the color red. And I think she did a great job. I think it blends very well, especially with the carbon fiber touches. Now, um, tell me about the, the trunk lock. What did you guys have to do there? Um, we actually, Jim thought these cars frown a lot, so he really wanted to give it shoulders. You know, it's kind of got shoulders like mine where they just kind of round off. They're yeah. not very square. So he wanted to give the car like a square lift. So he added, started with the spoiler coming off the quarter and bringing it around. But we wanted to do more than just lay a spoiler on it. We actually wanted to cut into the trunk, give it part lines, and just give it a different flare up, up the middle. And, uh, I haven't seen anyone really cut into it to, to put a spoiler like that. No, I haven't either. You guys always do a great job blending it to where it looks like it totally fits. It's it's not out of character at all. It looks really, really nice. Thanks. And what did you guys do for the rear bumper? I know you cut uh, it, but... We, we actually cut the rear bumpers, made made the shape we wanted, um, made them out of steel, Bondo, and then pulled molds and made them... They're solid carbon. The front and rear are solid carbon. Wow. Along with the hood. It's a one-off carbon hood. And the gills. Yeah, tell me about the gills. I saw a lot of the the, the pictures I saw just had big holes in the quarters, and I kept going, what are they doing there? Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing with those are these cars have a, a lot of stainless that run down the side of them. And okay. We removed the stainless, and behind the stainless is a crease in the quarters that's square. So we actually hammered the crease out of the quarters. Wow. And uh, where that shape, similar to a, a Fairlane is, which is like straight, um, they were so far forward in the quarter, it made the quarter look extremely long. Uh -huh. So we cut into the quarter, moved it where we wanted it to be, but then instead of uh, just putting that piece in, we've never really had a good luck with even tigging in a piece of metal on the side of a car with the heat. Right. You could always see that seam that would tend to grow. So we didn't want to, we left the virgin quarter, but we had to come up with something to fill it. So that's where that carbon piece came into effect. Okay. Mike, what the hell's under the hood? What did you guys do? This uh, looks like some transformer situation. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> the ring boys getting carried away again is what that is. Uh, it's a Roush 427 IR. Okay. And of course, it's the ring bracing and um, transformer look, as, as you'd say. You know, yeah. we've always been kind of mechanical and uh, want to expose everything. And this is our uh, export brace that we designed for this car up front. We've actually used those rear arms before on another car, but we made different shock tower covers, machined the valve covers. I actually had s, &S uh, logos put in the breathers. One thing about the Roush motors, they put a breather up front on both sides, and we wanted both breathers to be in the back, and we actually hid them in the wheelhouse, so they're remote uh, breathers for the car. Great. Uh, the fan shroud is kind of a different where it blows the hot air actually through the fan shroud up through the hood uh -huh. to diffuse the heat. Okay. Um, what kind of transmission do you have? We have a bowler. 
A O D E in it. You know, it's always nice working with Mark. He's just the, he's the best. He's really helped us out. So, Mike, when I look at the interior, I totally get the afterburner name. It looks like you're ready for flight. Can you tell me about what you guys did to the inside? Well, we worked with Steve at Upholstery Unlimited, and, and uh, God, I hate to even say his name because I'll never get to use him again. He is just that <laughs> talented. But uh, he's got a small crew like us, and we, we talk every day on the car. And yeah. at 5 o'clock every day, we would talk for 12 weeks. And the theme was to carry it out as... We were excited it was a post car. Um, we really wanted to keep a bench seat. We wanted the floor to look like it was rubber, uh, just to keep it old school but modern. I mean, the bench seat looks like a German suit maker made it, but yet it's, it's, uh, it still looks like it could be period correct. Yes, absolutely. Um, the features in the door are to mimic the tail lights, mm -hmm. um, just all bracketry to carry the motor into the interior. I heard a few um, people around here saying one of their favorite parts was your sun visors. Yeah, the sun visors. <laughs> Steve come up with, you know, just different way to, to mount the, the visors and the bracketry. And um, yeah, I, I think this car is, is one you could stare at for a little while and find a lot of little details, like from the map pockets to the to the little bezels that even go around the map pockets. Uh -huh. I mean, the attention to detail interior is is carried out through the car, I believe. So tell me about um, the red paint and, and the carbon fiber. What, what did you guys use? The red paint, uh, we call it afterburner red. It's uh, BASF, of course. Um, we've been using BASF long before we were building cars. I mean, that's the paint we've always used. And it wasn't a paint that we picked up because uh, they would give us free paint or something. We've been using BASF in our collision shop. And it, it's just a no-brainer for us. Yeah. And it's a Diamond a base with a 5300 clear. Okay. And how many times do you have to sand it? Uh, <laughs> a few. We start with eight, go to 1,000, 15, 2, 25, 3. And then I uh, actually did it again when I come back from Steve's. Not so aggressively, but I actually burned through the quarter and had to repaint this quarter. Oh, see? Yeah, you're always pushing that envelope I know. When, you, when, you, when you do that. Yep, so. yep. And tell me about the wheels and tires. So Now, I also heard this is at ride height. Is that correct? This is correct, yep. So it's way ride. low. It's pretty low, uh, but it's sinking into the carpet a little bit. Uh, the wheels are a forge line, okay. and then the tires are Goodyear F1s. Uh, it's got 10-inch in the rear, 8-inch in the front. Um, Flowmaster exhaust. And how does it handle? You know, I'd be lying to you. I know Jim's only done burnouts before we brought it here. <laughs> Jim got to drive yeah, it Yeah, Jim. If you ever see any pictures, it's always with Jim in the car. <laughs> I do the body work with the guys in the shop, and I just can't chip the car. I just, you know, you try to make the car so nice, and then I just don't get enjoyment out of thrashing it. Yeah, yeah. So. But it handles well? It drives good? You know, Jim says it drives really well, but good. again, I don't want to mislead till we, till Right. We, tell it's seen so so Mike it sounds like you worked with quite a few people to help get this car done we did we've really been blessed with some great sponsors you know again BASF Flowmaster Snap-on who's done actually a couple of our past cars uh, Royal Purple who's amazing oil it actually truly does bring down the temperature in our oil and uh, we've just been really blessed that's great. Well, again, you've done an excellent job and um, major attention to detail. And we love how you totally change the shape of a car, but it looks so right. So um, you guys did a great job again. We appreciate it. We've heard that people say it looks like a <laughs> Ring Brothers car. And that's, that's what we say. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.